I'd like to give you a head start. So I'm going to give you like a five minute head start, and then we'll work on it. Yeah, there it is. So you have a five minute head start, and then we'll work together on it on the board. So I see several people with conservation of angular momentum written on their sheets of paper. Under what circumstances, John, is angular momentum conserved? When there's no force applied. I'm sorry, when? If there's no force applied. No, that's not when angular momentum... When there's no torque. When there's no torque applied. Uh, close. I, I, it's very close. Um, see. When that torque equals zero? When the net external torque equals zero. So if the net external torque is equal to zero, that means that angular momentum is conserved. So let's see. When this piece of clay runs into the wheel, we get a force on the clay. Uh, I'll draw it down here. We get a force on the clay from the wheel, right? The clay applies an equal but opposite force. Uh, nope, I want to do the reverse. The force of the wheel on the clay is this direction. And the force of the clay on the wheel is in this direction. According to Newton's third law, those are going to be equal and opposite. If you were to sum the torques about the axis of rotation of the pulley, those torques are going to be equal but opposite. True? So in this particular case, yes, we could say that the sum of the initial angular momentum equals the sum of the final angular momentum. Is the linear momentum conserved? in this case. Under what circumstances is linear momentum conserved? So, if the net force equals zero, does the net force on the clay and the wheel combination add up to zero? Why not? There's an acceleration on the clay which means there's a net force acting on the clay, right? Because the clay goes from moving linearly to um, then moving tangentially. So this clay actually ends up having an acceleration act on it. So the net force does not equal zero. So the derivative of the, of the linear momentum as a function of time does not equal zero. So you have to solve this using, using the conservation of angular momentum with our axis of rotation right at the middle of the pulley. Okay. What would be an example of where angular momentum is not conserved? Um, we're gonna, I don't want to try to address that. I want to make sure we finish this right now. But we'll, we will be going through some examples where it's not conserved so that you can see that as well. But I, I don't want to try to do that right now because I'm going to run out of time. OK, so we have initially what objects and what equations? You two. Um, we have the clay, sticky clay. OK, we have the piece of clay initially. Is it a particle or a rigid object? It's a particle. Therefore, what equation are we going to use, Uche? R cross product. OK, so R, M, V, sine, theta, or R cross P. 
So we have, this is the R of the clay initial, the mass of the clay, the velocity of the clay initial, which is just the velocity initial, and the sine theta are initial. Plus, what else is moving before the collision? Nothing. After the collision, we have both the clay and the wheel are both moving. So the clay, we have our clay initial mass of the clay, velocity, uh, I'm sorry, this is not the initial, this is final. The R of the clay final, the velocity final of the clay, and the sine theta final. Plus, we have the wheel. What equation are we going to use for the wheel? Bailey. Um, the angular momentum of the wheel. Moment initial and velocity. And that's going to be the final angular velocity. Great. Our goal is to find that ang final angular velocity. Working from left to right, what are we going to do with the R of the clay initial mass of the clay velocity initial sine theta initial? Basil. Oh, well, sine theta is equal to opposite of your Jason. Okay, so we need to draw that triangle, right? So let's draw the triangle. This is R of the clay initial, this is theta. So when we do that, we get that the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. What is opposite theta, Meg? Um, uh, R, not R, but D. D, hypotenuse? Uh, R initial? For the clay, I'll just put the clay in there. So the R clay initial times the sine theta initial equals D. So notice, the last time it was equal to r, the total radius. Now it's just equal to d, the distance between, the vertical distance between where the axis of rotation is and where the clay runs into the uh, wheel. So what we end up with here is d times the mass of the clay times the velocity initial is equal to, uh, now, on the right hand side, notice that the way the clay is moving is very different. Initially, we had linear motion. Now, it's moving tangentially. Which means, what is our clay final? Um, Jacob. Big R. Big R. Notice, because now the velocity is a tangential velocity, so this R final is big R. Multiplied by the mass of the clay times the velocity final of the clay times the sine of what is the angle for the clay final. Hillary? We now need the angle final for the clay. Um. Say again? 90. 90. So notice how it has changed. Initially it was moving linearly, but now it's moving tangentially. So the R clay final is the radius of the whole thing, and the angle here is the angle between the tangential velocity and the radius, which is 90 degrees. Plus we have the moment of inertia. It is a solid disk. Am I correct here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have 1 half times the mass of the wheel times the radius squared. Say again? Cylinder. It's the same thing. I didn't want to use C for cylinder because we were using C for clay. That would be not good in the long run. Uh, and the angular velocity, fun. No, the moment of inertia is the same. One third. A disk is a cylinder. Ah, uh, hence the question. Right. The disk, a disk and a cylinder, the, you, the cylinder is just a longer disk. But they have the, same, the L end up, canceling, ends up canceling out, so it's the same thing. They're both one half M R squared. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We're looking for angular velocity final. Uh, we don't know velocity final. Yes. Uh, is the addition of the mass of the clay on the disk negative in rule? Is the addition of the mass of the clay on the disk because it's the the moment of inertia is right. So this is the angular momentum of the clay. This is the angular momentum of the disk. You could go through it and do it where you would figure out the moment of inertia total here times the angular velocity final, but then you would only have one. That would be the angular momentum final. 
where I've separated the two out. You could approach it that way as well. Uh, let's just clear things up a bit here. Do we know, we know the velocity initial, we know the mass of the clay, we know D, we know everything on the left hand side. Sine of 90 is just one. We don't know the velocity final, that's the only thing we don't know in this equation. Zero? Will the velocity final be the velocity tangential? It is. And then we can use velocity tangential equals uh, R. So the velocity tangential is going to be R times omega final. So what we get here is D times the mass of the clay times the velocity initial equals R times the mass of the clay times uh, R omega final plus one half mass of the wheel times the radius squared times omega final. Uh, consolidating things, we get D times the mass of the clay times the velocity initial equals, uh, we have R squared omega final twice r squared omega final times the quantity of the mass of the clay plus the mass of the wheel divided by 2. We're looking for the angular velocity final. That's going to be equal to d times the mass of the clay times the velocity initial divided by r squared times the mass of the clay plus the mass of the wheel divided by 2. Question. We can finish writing the belts. In the yeah, no, no, I have a question. Don't you worry. Please explain to me, Sarah Jane, why this why this answer makes sense. Um, it's always a good question to ask whenever you get a, a weird answer like this with just letters. Um, I don't know. What do you mean? Sorry. Okay. So, omega final. Does it make sense? that the larger the mass of the clay, you would have a larger angular velocity final. Right? Because the mass of the clay is down here, but it's more up here. So the mass of the wheel is on the bottom. So does it make sense that the larger mass of the wheel would decrease the angular velocity final? Yes. Right? So you can see you can go through all of those, and you can have a beautiful weekend. Cool.